Welcome to the video course, Getting to Know Duck Typing in Python. I'm Negar from Real Python, and I'll be your guide through your journey, befriending duck typing, and learn how you can use it in your code. So what is duck typing? Duck typing is like saying if it walks and quacks like a duck, then it's a duck. In coding, that means you don't check an object's type. If it has the right behavior, you just use it. In other words, you focus on behavior, not type. Let's understand what all of this means with an example. You're in charge of making coffee for your office. All you need to do is get coffee from everyone's machine and pour it into a communal coffee pot. Seems straightforward, right? Well, that's until you realize that everyone in your office has their own weird way of making coffee. Dan has a fancy smart coffee maker, Felix insists on making French press coffee, and your colleague Alice uses an espresso machine. Okay, how do you code this? You go with your gut. You create a base class named coffee maker and then inherit from it when you're defining all the other subclasses for each coffee machine. Amazing, now you have three coffee makers, smart coffee maker, French press, and espresso machine. They all inherit from coffee maker and have a make coffee method. Let's go and test it. You're testing out two of the classes, espresso machine and French press. You're instantiating them and then storing them in a list called coffee makers. And then you wanna check if they actually make coffee or not. So you're running a for loop and using the make coffee method on them and it works. You get espresso shot is ready and French coffee is done. Great. But what if a new colleague brings in a new fancy coffee machine? What if 10 new people join at the same time? Do you have to create subclasses for all of these new machines? As a matter of fact, you do have a new colleague that has, well, we don't exactly judge, but an alien coffee orb. He hands you a glowing orb that materializes liquid when you think about caffeine. And you're like, well, that doesn't exactly fit into my coffee maker class. So what do I do? Then it hits you. At the end of the day, this alien coffee orb is making coffee after all. So it does have a make coffee method. Even though this isn't a coffee maker from Earth, so it's not a coffee maker subclass, it still does behave like one. It makes coffee. This exact concept is duct typing. You're focusing on behavior, not type. So you instantiate the alien coffee orb and use the make coffee method on it. And guess what? It works. Alien coffee materialized. Your code works with anything that has the make coffee method. This means that as long as your objects have the correct method, you can treat all of them the same way. There's more to the story, of course. There are several ways to implement duct typing and loads of other things to consider, which is what this course is all about. Before jumping into the lessons, make sure you're ready by going through these awesome tutorials and video courses. Object-Oriented Programming in Python, Python Classes, The Power of Object-Oriented Programming, and Python Type Checking. These courses and tutorials will give you an amazing foundation to fully take advantage of this video course. In this video course, you'll understand what duct typing is and why it's useful. You'll learn how to leverage duct typing in Python's built-in types. You'll also see where not to use duct typing and we'll explore a few alternatives to it. You'll try combining duct typing and type hints and you'll run into some challenges which you will overcome with ABCs. Next up is exploring duct typing. In this lesson, you'll learn what duct typing is and see it in action. Let's begin with one of the core principles of object-oriented programming, classes. Classes are all about encapsulating data and behaviors. They define what an object can do and how it interacts with the world. Also, you don't actually need to know what class an object belongs to. As long as an object provides the methods or attributes you're looking for, you can swap it out with another object that behaves the same way. This very idea that behavior matters more than type brings you to duct typing. 
Duct typing is a system where an object is treated as a certain type if it has the required methods and attributes regardless of its actual class. This allows objects from different unrelated classes to work in a specific situation as long as they follow the same basic rules or interface. The name duck typing actually comes from the saying, if it walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, then it's a duck. In programming, the concept of duck typing encourages you to think about objects in terms of what they do rather than what they are. So you don't need to ask, is this a duck? Instead, you just check if the object can quack and walk like a duck. If it can, you treat it as one. Quacking and walking symbolize the actions or behaviors an object can perform. Let's look at an example to understand this principle. You have three classes, duck, swan, and albatross. Each class defines the same two methods, swim and fly, with its own specific implementation. In the duck class, you have the swim method, which says the duck is swimming, and a fly method, which says the duck is flying. Similarly, the swan class has methods that say what the swan is doing, and so does the albatross class. The important thing here is that these three classes don't share a common parent class or interface. They're completely independent. But because each class implements the same two methods, which are swim and fly, Python can handle them in the same way. This is where duct typing comes in. Take a look at the second snippet. You're creating a list called birds, which contains objects of duck, swan, albatross. Next, you're iterating over the list and calling the fly and swim methods on each object. And as you can see, Python doesn't care what type each object is. As long as the object has a fly method and a swim method, your code works perfectly. And this is duct typing in action. When you run this code, here's the output you'll see. The duck is flying, the duck is swimming, the swan is flying, the swan is swimming, and finally, the albatross is flying and the albatross is swimming. This shows you that Python isn't checking if an object is specifically a duck, swan, or albatross. It's only checking if the object can fly and swim. If it can, perfect. Python lets the code run. In this lesson, you get to know what polymorphism is and how duct typing is one of the ways you can implement it. Let's start with polymorphism. The word might sound fancy, but the idea is straightforward. Polymorphism lets a function handle objects of any type as long as they share the same behavior, and it adapts its behavior based on the object's capabilities. You'll find different forms of polymorphism in object-oriented programming. For example, you've probably seen polymorphism being implemented using inheritance before. Let's go back to the example that you just saw in the previous lesson. The albatross, the duck, and swan that could fly and swim. Using inheritance, you can create a base class bird that enforces the subclasses to have the methods swim and fly. If the subclasses don't have these methods, you'd get a not implemented error. Then you can create subclasses of bird like duck and swan and albatross that have their own swim and fly methods. Like duck would say the duck is swimming. In other words, you're using a base class to create an interface here. When you go ahead and create instances of duck, swan and albatross, they all have fly and swim methods since they come from the same base class bird. When you use fly and swim on them, it works. The duck is flying, the duck is swimming, etc. Duck typing is another way to achieve polymorphism in Python that doesn't require inheritance. It works by allowing different objects to use the same methods as long as they define them. You've actually seen this example before in the previous lessons. You're doing exactly the same thing as before, but without creating any base class and inheriting from it. You have separate classes here that don't share any base classes, yet they all have fly and swim methods. Since they all have the needed methods, you can treat them exactly the same. When you create instances and use fly and swim on them, it works and you get exactly the same results as before. This is implementing polymorphism using duct typing in action. Duct typing isn't just a cool concept. 
It actually makes your code more flexible and easier to work with. And here's why. Flexibility. You can use different objects interchangeably as long as they have the right behavior. No need to worry about their exact types. Simplicity. Instead of focusing on what class an object belongs to, you just care about what it does. Code reuse. You can reuse classes in different contexts without forcing them into a rigid inheritance structure. Easier prototyping. You can create objects with necessary behavior and skip complex type definitions. But of course, duct typing isn't perfect. Here's what to watch out for. Runtime errors. If an object is missing a required method, your code won't fail until execution time. Python won't warn you in advance. Lack of explicitness. Without clear type definitions, it can be harder to tell which methods an object should have just by looking at it. Maintenance issues. As your project grows, keeping track of which object supports which behavior can get really tricky. Now, you'll see concrete examples of these downsides and the alternatives soon. But for now, the key takeaway is this. Duct typing makes your code more dynamic, but it also requires careful handling to avoid unexpected errors. Exploring duct typing in Python's built-in types. Duct typing keeps Python flexible by focusing on what an object can do instead of needing strict types. Also, built-in types share common behaviors like iteration, sorting, and reversing, making them straightforward to use in for loops and other operations. Now, what does this mean? It means that you can take advantage of duct typing when you're dealing with built-in types. Let's go and play around with the built-in types a little. Take iteration, for example. Do you think all built-in types support iteration? Look at this code snippet. You have a bunch of examples to test this idea. A list, a tuple, a string, a dictionary, and a set. And then you're putting everything in a list called collections, and you're trying to print them in a nested for loop, or in other words, you're testing if they support iteration. What do you think will happen if you run this code? Would it run without any problems, or would you get an error? You can pause this video for a little and think about it. OK, ready? When you run the code, it works, no errors. You get every single item inside of the stuff inside your collections list, like the list, the string, and the set printed. This means that all of the built-in types you have here support iteration. How can you connect this conclusion with what you already know about duct typing? Tell us in the comment section below. Now, here's a table that breaks down which built-in Python types like list, tuple, strings support different operations. You can see that some, like list, can do almost everything, while others, like sets, don't support indexing or slicing because they're unordered. This is a great example of how Python focuses on what an object can do rather than what it is. If something supports an operation, you can use it, no matter the type. Now here's a challenge for you. Try creating a class that checks whether a built-in type supports each operation from the table in the last slide. Configure it however you prefer, and when you're done, show off your solution in the comment section below. We're excited to see what you'll come up with.